Okay, so the final speaker of this morning's session is John Carlin. John is the CEO of Bahnhof, which is Sweden's oldest and largest independent ISP, founded in 1994. Bahnhof has presence across Sweden, uh, as well as Copenhagen, Oslo, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, Paris, Lisbon, and London. And today, he'll be talking to us about the future of 5G. So please welcome John to the stage. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm going to talk about technology and politics. Uh, because uh, I'm not a technical guy myself, so this is, will be kind of um, interesting to be in this um, well-educated, uh, well, to, to try to establish a new model. Uh, my idea is that uh, it's a conflict out there. It's a conflict between uh, what we can call the open uh, source community, the open possibility to use uh, resources to com communicate and the conflict on the other hand is the big telcos who lock in the possibility to uh, communicate with uh, new models and um, I often think about I'm a fixed line guy myself I think of, of in, in most of us is probably the DNA is fixed lines and I remember in uh, 98, uh, when I was called, I, I think it was at Christmas, when an angry CEO called me and said they were down, and they had a, a wireless connection. Uh, so I've always been uh, suspicious about wireless connections. Uh, you cannot trust them. Uh, uh, line of sight doesn't work, uh, there happens things, and so on. But today, most of the communication we do is, is based on wireless solutions. Either it's based on uh, Wi-Fi uh, solutions in hotspot areas, or in the office, or at home, or it's based on, on smartphones, and you're out and you're using uh, wide area uh, networks where you cover large areas with uh, uh, mobile services. So uh, this is also kind of a natural uh, this is kind of a natural monopoly. Uh, the radio spectrum is a resource that everybody can use, but it's regulated, so you cannot use it anyway how you want. Uh, it's, uh, it's based on the idea that uh, waves cannot collide, because then it, it, it makes uh, interference and communication doesn't work. So uh, the idea is uh, to, to how do you control the waves? How do you get it to work? How can we make this the best possible environment for communication. And uh, the raw model today is that you take uh, from this, per you take, uh, uh, this uh, uh, frequency from that point to that point, and then you give it away to the highest bidder. Uh, so this is how it's worked. And now we have this spectrum on 3.5 to uh, 3.4, sorry, to 3.8 gigahertz, which is based on uh, 5G. So 5G will be uh, uh, a possibility co to communicate with faster and higher bandwidths than today. So in order to get this C to disturbance to work, you have to have some kind of rules. It must be allocated uh, on a way that, that people can use it. Uh, there's not a problem with Wi-Fi, because Wi-Fi has so, uh, a local perspective. There is this uh, very not, not so powerful transmission, and it's also based on the idea that uh, it's, it's very short waves, so it doesn't uh, interfere when you have... Uh, it, it interfere, but it's not, it's not uh, a national wide area covering services. So today, we have three uh, examples of uh, what we can do, and this old-fashioned from the 90s was the NMT450 band, and that was covering a large, large areas, uh, but not very high bandwidth. Uh, it's, a, it's a way to have it. We have this, uh, in Sweden, we have this mast up with Terracom, which provided NMT services at uh, 450 megahertz uh, services. It was low bandwidth and very long range. And this was allocated uh, to the big telcos, and this was not open for use for everybody. It's a locked-in ecosystem, so it's, it's totally regulated. The opposite of that is Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is based on the idea that uh, it's unregulated, and you, uh, you have, it's kind of a best-effort service. Uh, 
and it's it's uh, it's not only 5 gigahertz; it's 2.4 gigahertz as well. But but uh, and it's the new uh, standard is also going to be up to 6 gigahertz, where you can provide almost 10 gigabit at, at uh, uh, very small uh, distances and ultra short range. So these three examples, uh, where the last example is this. And it's a 3.5 gigahertz band, which can provide 20 gigabits of data traffic in a diameter of 250 meters. Uh, and uh, everybody thinks that's OK. Uh, this is for my cellular phone. I don't think this. I, 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 I see it as a way to provide uh, data traffic uh, to uh, enhance our fiber. Uh, this is the last mile extension of our network. It's not going to eliminate the need for fiber, of course not, but this will be an extended uh, way of expanding our network uh, uh, with the last mile, and it will also be possible to use uh, cellular solutions way better than before. Uh, this solution is also, uh, I would say, uh, cost efficient in that way. It will not cost as much as when you have to dig fiber uh, so it can be very flexible and it can be used uh, on new waves that n nobody else uh, thought of before. Uh, but it's not decided yet. They are just considering it right now, and this is why I'm speaking about this now, because uh, it's not decided. It should be the normal way to do it is to uh, allocate it to uh, a few uh, incumbents, the big telcos, or uh, and now they are considering, the, the regulatory body is considering to use it uh, on another way to see if it's possible to, to lock up, to see if it is possible to open up the spectrum frequencies for more to use. Uh, and the practical application, what we want to do and what others could do, is to backhaul uh, the base stations with fiber, uh, small cells provided by backhauled by fiber and then expand our network. We don't need to build a, a large ecosystem uh, like a big telco uh, using uh, a lot of, of devices. For us, it's, it's sufficient to build. Think of it as Wi-Fi on uh, with greater range and higher bandwidth, uh, penetrating walls. Uh, so if we put up a station here, we would probably cover all this, this uh, central area of Stockholm. Uh, and this could be do, done very cost efficient. So how is this done today? Uh, how do you get these frequencies? By pulling out this form. This is an application to the regulatory Swedish regulatory body, PTS. Uh, this is the traditional way. Uh, I think this is Stone Age. Uh, it's like uh, you you, you uh, apply for, can I have this frequency to put up a radio transmitter? And this is all historical reasons, but they are still using this uh, for allocating the frequencies that should be put to use on a much efficient way than today. Uh, we have applied for this, so uh, we are now putting out several base stations. It will be at least two or three in Stockholm, uh, and it will be also in Linköping and in Malmö. Uh, so we, we, our base stations will be testing this possibility and open it up for everybody to use uh, 5G with, uh, with an open ecosystem. So how come it is like this? Well, uh, what the, the state, the Swedish state, they, they want to sell it and they have an auction, so they sell this, this frequency band from here to there. Uh, so. Uh, and of course, it generates a lot of money. So it's the highest bidder get, get this frequency band, and they can use it. Uh, it's also a tradition. Uh, I mean, they don't know anything. Uh, we have always done this before. So we, uh, let's, let's do it like we have done it before. Uh, and the, the third thing is that they want control. It's like uh, not everybody can put up their own radio transmission. What would the word be if, if, if we could communicate freely? Um, uh, and uh, as you can see at the first point here, as much money as possible. Okay, uh, I would say remove Wi-Fi from, from, from uh, the economics and see what happens. I think that Wi-Fi has contributed, and, and solutions which is open has contributed a lot more. If you take it uh, on the long term, it's, it's probably much, much more than you would get from buying this from a single or selling it to a single uh, uh, entity. 
uh, uh, you will get a lot of money from them, but you will also miss a lot of other opportunities, both on innovations and you will also lot of lots of opportunities uh, financially. Uh, it's a tradition. Yes, they are not entrepreneurs. They don't think of nothing new. It's just like we do it and we don't change change it. it, it it's like uh, when we speak to PTS and I talked about this and they said, "Ah, oh, you mean you can do like this? Ah, oh, we have never thought about this before. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and they want control. OK, uh, I have a surprise for the PTS. Internet is mostly unregulated. It's possible to freely communicate. So the argument to keep control of radio transmissions is, is just silly. You can go back in the history to see silly things. Is, does anybody know what the, the stuff, the, the machine to the right is? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's a CM216. Uh, it's built in 1960 and it's operated by cogwheels. It's a mechanical calculator. And in the year 1970, in Facit Otvida Berg, which was the company, there were working 14,000 people. They had businesses in 140 countries. And just a few months after that, they were bankrupt. And what happened? The electronic calculator comes. So there were no need for cogwheels anymore. So it's all about changing the mindset. What do you do? Change the mindset of, of how you use the frequency band. Uh, the, 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 is anybody know what, what the, the right card is? Yeah, it's, it's Minitel. It delayed France development into internet for several years because they were stuck with the idea that internet was something that they do abroad. No, no, we should have our own ecosystem uh, called Minitel. They have these this small devices connected. It was not uh, open internet. It was used to lock in people. And this is what happens when you lock in people. You must do something else. I mean, that an uh, open perspective on this, with open use of frequencies, would change the total way of how we communicate. Imagine if you could use the 3.5 gigahertz, which possibilities a much higher bandwidth, area coverage, but still locally, uh, it would be a uh, possibility for everybody in here to invent new stuff. I'm not going to sell you a product. This, this speech is not about selling a product. It's about changing the mindset to see if something else can be done. Yes, I believe it can. So. We want to use the open spectrum to uh, be possible to make innovations, to do something new and use it for data traffic. We are a broadband operator, we sell fibers, but we want this as a complementary service to our existing solutions. Others can use it as they like, but this is possible. Okay, then we come to how is it possible? How can we do it? Remember the form, remember the application that, that uh, uh, the Swedish regulatory body had that you have to sign I want here, from here to here. That's Stone Age perspective. We need a different way to operate this. We need different house rules to, to, to sell out the spectrum. And it's, I'm going to show you um, examples of this. I, I call this the Tetris model. It's based on the idea that um, uh, eliminate, eliminate the white space, uh, get as much density as possible. When you have a frequency, you should not have open areas not in use. You should use everything of the frequencies all the time. If you have a monopoly, you have a few bricks, but a lot of white space. You have a, a few incumbents using that, uh, but they don't, they don't use it, uh, uh, the white space around them. Uh, and it's not efficient. A lot of players eliminate as much as, as the space between as possible. Use only, uh, use it at all times, and don't don't uh, allocate frequencies from that point to that point. Instead, you should use every possible area of the open spectrum. It's like it's uh, you can an older older uh, example is a silo. Uh, if you have a silo, uh, th this is how it looks today. But it's not only that, it's like within the silos, uh, it's also white space. You can see, the, because uh, they are not using the frequencies even within their own ecosystems. Uh, so uh, Telenor has their own ecosystem, TL has their own ecosystem, and Free has their own ec ecosystem. And they build this ecosystem for communicating using this frequency band. But it's still empty in here. It's still empty there, still empty there. 
So, and plus, they are not using it as space between. That is not in use today. A better model in this uh, uh, perspective may also be uh, virtualization. Uh, the solution, how do we set the house rules, is not by using the application that PTS has put out, it's by virtualization. You should virtualize uh, the spectrum band, uh, letting it possible that instead of using this standalone perspective, uh, use a cloud perspective. Uh, use a system that allocated resources and share resources between uh, entities, not uh, using this silo model when your own silo, each, each of these computers to the right could be considered as a silo. How do you, you, how do you get it to work together? Because you, you share the resources. You share the whole resource, because then you can use the whole spectrum band for communication. So how do you do that? Yeah, You do it by building a spectrum allocation system. Uh, it should be based on, I, I, this is just my view, it could be done by a monopoly company or somebody in here with a great idea, but I think it should be open source, it should be uh, an open solution that everybody can use, uh, and it should be neutral, operated by a third party. And there are uh, some, some specifications. I mean, what should you know? You should know uh, what range, and, and 3.5 gigahertz bands is short range, uh, and it, you should, in range is also determined by how powerful the transmission have. If it's 1 watt or 10 watt, uh, it's, it, the range change, but that should be specified. Uh, it should be coordinates where are you setting up your, your transmission, when are you doing the time slot from here to when it ends, uh, the exact frequency, uh, and who. Uh, I mean, this is, I, I recognize this from some, some other perspective, and that is like a DNS server or a, or a CCTLD. We operate a CCTLD ourselves. So I know this is just like contact and perspective. Who is, who is operating that resources at this exact moment? It's a much better way to do it like this instead of using this, this old-fashioned form where you fill out. Build a technical system uh, for keeping track of who's using the frequencies at the exact moment. Then you don't have to sell it out like a big block to one single operator. And this is already done. Surprise! Uh, <laughs> This is uh, Citizen, remember the name Citizen, Citizen Broadband Radio Services. Uh, the first commercial services will start in uh, late this year, and it's uh, sponsored, I mean, I think the main sponsor is Google. That, that's the only reason why I'm skeptical about this whole, whole thing, but, <laughs> but, but still, still, the industry is behind this, and, and what happened is in, in the United States, because there's where they're trying it, it's like, uh, they're upping the spectrum between uh, 3.55 gigahertz to 3.7 gigahertz. Uh, and they have allocated it in three sections. The first section is to the big uh, traditional way to the incumbents. The second way is a priority, priority access. Uh, and, the, and the third part of it is best effort. Basically, everybody could have put up their own uh, transmission and doing 5G services. Everybody in this room could set up their own little 5G station and covering their, their block at home. Could be possible, yes. So this, exist, this equipment exists, uh, and now uh, people are testing it and trying to see whoop, if it works. So uh, my uh, intention with, with to pointing out this is that we have to do something about it. Uh, it's not. If you're not doing, the, I know most technic technicians they don't see it as politics, but this is so clearly a political matter. The state should not uh, uh, give out this uh, frequency band uh, like they have before, because this this is a different thing. It's it's much more regional. It's it's a short range perspective. It's more similar to Wi-Fi. It's like if if we're gonna give it this away, uh, then then it would be the same perspective that if you have given given Wi-Fi away, uh, you will lose a lot of possibilities for innovations. And basically, this is it. Uh, 
this is in the beginning. So what we are doing is we are setting up our own base stations and open them for people to try and test. Uh, so it will be open. The first, first will be in uh, Södra Malm in, in our uh, data center. We have a mast there. And we have, will put up a mast in, in the city here. And we have one mast in, in Linköping. And we also will have masts in, uh, in uh, Malmö. Uh, so there is where I'm going to try this. Yes, that was it. So we have some time. Thank you for a very provocative and interesting um, talk. Are there any questions or comments on this? We have a few uh, minutes available, so please feel free. No questions? <laughs> OK, well, thank you. Um, yeah. And join me in thanking John for yeah. a very interesting thank talk. You. Thank you.